What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is your Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this Thursday evening, February 17, 2022. It's about 6.41 p.m. California time. Latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 4.3 earthquake right around the Japan region. Right there on the globe, you can see that uh, earthquake there. Looks like they did have a little bit of movement prior to that as well with a 5.0 over the last 24 hours or so. So we've got to watch this area of Japan pretty closely as they're uh, kind of right there in the hot spot zone of that we've been watching for quite some time uh, when it comes to the potential of larger earthquake activity. Japan Trench and the Coral Kamchaka Trench area. Looking at the latest information here on the USGS map, the flat scale model shows that 4.3 here at 69.1 kilometers below surface into the uh, subduction zone there it looks like also 5.0 earlier uh, way earlier uh, looks like earlier this morning a 5.0 at 52.8 kilometers so a little bit of subduction going on here in this area of the japan trench gotta watch this pretty closely all this activity coming after the 6.8 that struck there in fiji yesterday kind of like to look at uh uh well um, movement following large deep earthquakes like that and see how they affect other portions of the plate Looking down at Fiji and the Samoa and the Tonga Trench area all show some surface rupture uh, from the 6.8 that struck yesterday. A little bit of movement as well into the subduction zone of the Kermadec Trench, a little bit further south, about 323 kilometers for that 5.5. And uh, some other shallower earthquake here. You can see that movement pretty shallow, 10 kilometers or so for the remainder of those earthquakes around the Tonga and Samoa area. Uh, Solomon Islands, westward, Papua New Guinea, look pretty quiet. A few earthquakes around the Indonesia area. A couple of these pretty deep as well. Got a pretty shallow earthquake here along the Java Trench. This one of them very capable of producing some large earthquakes. Uh, very, very pow powerful earthquakes, no doubt, in that region of the world. But today, just that 5.1. Some deep movement, though, well to the east around the Banda Sea. With the 4.2 at 421 kilometers and up here around the southern end of the Philippine Trench had a 4.6 at 199 kilometers. Mariana Trench looks pretty quiet over here to the east. Uh, let's see what else we got here to the west. China did have one earthquake way out here, 4.6. And the Mediterranean Sea, Middle East, all look pretty quiet here on the map. According to the USGS, they're very, very quiet. Uh, this little earthquake here in the middle Indian Ridge 4.8 that was from earlier should be dropping off the globe here pretty soon i believe that was a, a kind of a uh, earthquake from last night or early this morning south sandwich trench hasn't seen any further activity it looks like that 5.5 got upgraded to a 5.6 in the south sandwich islands region 6.9 kilometers pretty shallow earthquake there prior to the subduction zone it looks like or actually right smack dab in it we have been seeing uh, some deep movement here over the last couple weeks. So, of course, you remember this is where that eight-pointer struck. We had a, a swarm of earthquakes all up and down that South Sandwich Trench area last year. Uh, so it's possible we could still see some earthquakes ramping up there around the five, five range, even the up uh, the uh, six range when it comes to aftershock sequences. South America region uh, up around the Ecuador area had a 4.5 earlier. Right smack dab into the, looks like the Ecuador Trench area. As we zoom in, you can see this little area right here. You gotta remember down dip, you get the subduction zone creating these mountains and uh, potential volcanoes. This earthquake here, way down there, even though it's uh, inland, it's definitely way down into this trench at 169 kilometers uh, for that 4.5. Uh, some further deep movement inland and also deep as well into the Peru Chile Trench. At, uh, looking at, uh, wow, 100, between 100 and 185 kilometers for this this uh, set of fours here in the area of Chile and Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, way down there into that subduction zone. Uh, another earthquake off the coast of El Salvador. Of course, you remember we had that 6.2 here um, yesterday, a little bit further up north in the Guatemala area. They did see a little bit of aftershock activity following that uh, large earthquake. Luckily for them, for them, 
Uh, it was far down below the surface there, creating a little bit less damage uh, as what it could have been had this been a shallower earthquake. Uh, so we seen a couple fours kick up there. Some further movement down south, though, uh, about 150, 200 miles or so, still into the Middle America Trench with a 5.2 earlier today, um, just off the coast of El Salvador. So a little bit of migration of movement here along the uh, trench region. Go back to the all magnitudes here. And Puerto Rico still seeing some activity out here along the southwest part of Puerto Rico and also to the north around the Puerto Rico Trench. Looks like about 25 earthquakes or so within that region of the all magnitudes map. St. John's area southward uh, through the Dominica looks pretty quiet. Trinidad and Tobago area look pretty quiet as well. Uh, I'm still waiting to see some further movement here in this region. Uh, I remember they had some here. I think it's been eh, I think it's been over the 30-day level. Nope, actually it hasn't. There's that swarm of activity they had here. Only seen quite a few fours and some fives. No major quake following that activity uh, over the last month within this region, Port of Spain and Trinidad area. But uh, still kind of watching that uh, for its potential movement. Uh, what else we got here, folks? In the North American continent, the states, the latest quake there, at least uh, some activity within the last hour up in the Oklahoma region once again. Return of earthquake activity here around the Waquita Trend and gas fields. We don't need to zoom into the satellite imagery because we all know what's out there when it comes to wastewater injection and the uh, oil fields northwest of Medford. Looks like uh, a couple twos today and a 1.8 within the last hour. Uh, not a whole lot going on through central Oklahoma or Texas. One little earthquake out here around the Odessa and the Midland area. 2.5 at uh, 5 kilometers. Uh, Pecos, Texas area looks pretty quiet for now. For now is the key word. We did see one earthquake out here west of the New Madrid zone. This area very capable of producing a pretty significant size hazard and earthquake out here in this area of the country. Pretty highly uh, populated region as well. At uh, 2.3, striking pretty much within the seismic hazard zone, but just outside of the main area of the uh, New Madrid zone. Eastern part of the country all looks pretty quiet for now. Up into the Alaska region. We'll go ahead and zoom in up here. See a little bit of swarming going on around the, uh, what is that, Rampart? Rampart area. A couple twos and some ones kicking off there in the Ray Mountains. Northwest of the Fairbanks area. Some movement around the Cook Inlet area as well. See a couple small microquakes here within the last hour, 2.4. Somewhat deep into this area and also the subduction zone of the uh, North American Pacific Plate. A little bit of activity here to the west as well near Sand Point at 19.9. And a little bit of swarming out here in the area of the Dutch Harbor area. It looks like a couple small microquakes. The rest of the Aleutian Trench there is almost going to start speaking Russian there. Uh, looking pretty quiet. A little bit of activity up here looks like. Uh, some small microquakes outside of this, uh, this region here. Uh, what else we got? Japan, like I said, we got to watch this area over here pretty closely. Uh, it is kind of getting up there and down there into the subduction zone. This area right here, uh, definitely on my watch list for larger scale movement. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. I kind of want to show you guys the uh, GPS movement over there in the Japan area. We'll go ahead and zoom over here across the beautiful Pacific and check out the uh, eastern coast here of Japan. Uh, where are we at? Let's see here. There's a lot of GPS stations up here. A lot. Holy smokes. There's a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and pick one up here along the eastern coast and see the, uh, the uh, well, since 2014, at least this one shows a pretty heavy uh, uplift right here from that subduction zone. This isn't the one I want to see here. Hold on a second. I was looking at quite a few of these earlier. And I'll go up over here, I believe. All of these show quite a bit of uplift uh, when you look at any of the GPS stations here. But uh, that's quite a bit of accumulation here 
since about 2014 or so. Uh, you got to add on the 300 plus the 200. We're looking at 500 uh, mm of uh, uplift vertical displacement there on that subduction zone there of the east coast of Japan uh, in those years. And I know we had that big one back in 2011, the nine pointer. It kicked out, uh, kicked off out there in the Japan area. But uh, it's been all too quiet since then. And more specifically, within the last year or so, we've seen just a general decline in earthquake activity, but uh, increasing uplift here along the, Aleut the um, Japan Trench and the Kurokam Chaka Trench. So that tells me right there we're getting ready. We're uh, building up some steam here for a potential larger earthquake here along the Japan Trench. So just, uh, just a heads up. Uh, what else we got here? Big Island of Hawaii. These guys um, looking pretty quiet for now. There, yeah, there is earthquake activity, but nothing within the last hour. Some movement outside of Kilauea Volcano down here to the southeast. Looks like a 2.4 and some other deeper movement here. But uh, overall, things just kind of on the quiet side temporarily there on the big island. Uh, let's check out the Earthquakes Canada map here on the... Uh, website and we'll see what these guys are reporting it doesn't look like they have anything uh within the last day except for this most recent little bitty microquake that we've seen earlier uh, outside of the sydney area looks like 17 kilometers north of sydney bc magnitude 0.6 so very small quake not a whole lot going on throughout the canada region looking at the tremor activity here the tremor map along the cascadia subduction zone shows zip zero not a not nothing going on here come to a complete halt once again down dip into the cascadia subduction zone i thought this thing was going to start kicking up here but uh, kind of reached a, a little point again where we're kind of just at a standstill it's been like that uh the standstill has kind of been been pretty uh continuous like this for quite a few months now uh occasionally we get these uh Days where we have about 280 or so. Uh, most of it has been in Northern California. We did see a little uptick out here around the uh, Seattle area and the Vancouver Island ranges. But uh, overall, it's just been kind of odd. And if you look at GPS systems here along the Northern California coastline, I, I don't think I need to explain what's out there. We're seeing uh, definitely some heightened movement here in the uh what do we got 2022 this area though it's kind of surprising this area of northern california shows a down dip in terms of the vertical uplift here in northern california uh, but there's definitely uh quite a bit it's kind of odd i find that very odd that this area is kind of um going down let me see which station was i looking at here there's a couple up here along the oregon coastline showing a uh Pretty large increase in upward movement. Is it the Brookings area? Yeah, just south here, right around the Brookings, Oregon area. Uh, seeing that uh, very obvious rise in movement. Seeing a pretty good down dip around 2013 or so. Looks like uh, middle of 2013, a little dip. And then a steady rise uh, with the uh, vertical displacement there in, into the uh, Cascadia subduction zone pretty cool to look at i mean you kind of think about well what does it matter if it's going northeast upward you know it's just it's a subduction zone it's a major subduction zone and when we get the get this uplift kind of gives us a telltale sign of well what's going on down below you know we got the uh explorer plate out here juan de fuca plate kind of pushing underneath the north american plate and building up that spring if you will you know kind of pushing up the western part of the u.s the united states here and uh creating that tension kind of like a spring if you will and uh one of these days this area is going to drop like a rock about 25 feet or so uh and then uh once that big one hits it's going to be a going to be a scary scenario out here along the west coast not fear mongering that's that's a fact don't want to scare anybody best just best uh to be prepared some beautiful areas up and down the Oregon coastline, Northern California, but uh, whew, not the place to live unless you're way up there in the mountains. 
Here's the station up here around the Bandon area. Still shows that uh, pretty large uptick in movement. Looks like over the past, since about 2017 or so, we've seen a pretty good increase in overall uplift along that coast range. And uh, still like looks like that's continuing into the 2022 area. Uh, 22 region. All right, what else we got? Space weather. There is some um, activity kicking up here. Looks like, oh, well, at least over the next couple nights, the three day geomagnetic forecast calls for calm conditions around the February 20th time frame. Things kind of ramp up with a 65% uh, chance higher latitude storming. The uh, source of the large eruption, if you guys remember that, that massive CME that kicked off here a couple days ago on the 15th. Well, it's starting to come around in view now, ahead of the uh, stereo spacecraft. It will reach the eastern limb in about three days, so stay tuned as a rise of solar activity could be on the horizon. Kind of curious to see what that's going to look like. So we'll see as this thing comes into view. Our sunspots at the moment directly at us. Uh, there is some. Nothing significant, 2948 kind of popping out there a little bit. That could be the reason for the uh, the current threat levels, 45% chance of sea flare. Uh, but overall, things kind of on the green side, the mellow side. But uh, we'll see how that uh, kicks up, see how that ramps up here in the coming days with that, uh, with that sunspot turning into view. All right, folks, hope everyone has a good night. Please stay safe out there and, uh, yeah, enjoy the evening. Peace out.